Okay, today's video, I'm gonna show you how to charge a Tesla using your Rivian. Your Rivian has a built-in inverter that can charge a Tesla or any other electric vehicle. So I'm gonna show you what you will need to do to make it happen. All right, so first things you're gonna need is gonna be the charging core either from the Tesla and or the Rivian. The Rivian also has their own uh, core, right? And so we'll try both to see that this works. Also, what you will need is gonna be one of these bonding, uh, neutral bonding um, adapters that you can buy on Amazon. I'll put a link on the description of this video so you can get this. So the first thing you have to do is you have to connect the cables. Okay, now that we have the cable connected there and to the Tesla, uh, next you will plug in your bonding, your neutral bonding plug into the other socket. Here we go. Then what I would recommend you doing is going into your Tesla and setting this thing to the lowest setting. All right, let's do five amps just so that you can see so you don't trip the breaker on the Rivian yet right next what you will have to do is turn on the Rivian's um, inverters on all right and you do that by going into the car right here and then charging and then this is the button here it says turn 120 volt outlets you turn them on do not leave mm -hmm. devices plugged in it just gives you like a little warning here turn the outlets on okay i think now the tesla should be charging Okay, so it's got a red thing. Let's see. Okay, it's blue, it's green. No, it's red. Okay, so it's not working with the Tesla one. It gives you an error in here. So let's see if we can do it with the Rivian one. All right, I think I just connected the Rivian one and I think the Rivian one is working. Here we go, it's connected. You will need the extra adapter that goes from J1772 to Tesla that is found on your Tesla charging kit. So let's see here if it's charging. Sure enough, it is charging at five amps. So let's find out uh, how many amps it will support. How much can you pull out of the uh, the Rivian over there? Let's turn this off because it's, it's not so loud. All right, according to the Rivian manual, the plugs on the truck can do a maximum of 1500 watts. If you do 1500 watts divided by uh, 120 volts, then that's 12 and a half amps. So you could possibly do, I don't know, 12. So that's the max there. There we go. It's doing 12 amps out of 12 amps. So you could charge a 120 volts. You can do the max. Um, so 62% right now at four, exactly at 402. Let's go look at the Rivian, see how many miles it's got, and then see if we can figure out just what the inefficiencies will be, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's 128 miles at exactly 402. Um, we'll see, I don't know, like 1%, I guess, uh, how many you know, how many percentage, and 44% here, how much it will take off of this truck. All right, so the question is, why does the Tesla EVSC or portable, you know, charging unit here, 
does not work on this setup. And I think the reason they have a bunch of safeties. One of the safeties uh, that it requires is that the that the ground must be bonded to the neutral because that is a safety feature that every building, at least every um, residential building in the United States should have in the panel, in the electrical panel, all the the ground bus bar uh, is connected, bonded to the neutral, right? And so if that doesn't exist, then this will throw a fault and it will not let you because that means that your building's not cor correctly connected up to code. And that might be an indication that there might be some other issues. So the car doesn't want to charge in that condition because well if if it's not if your house is not wired correctly then there's a likelihood of a fire right starting because these cars can pull quite a bit of power uh and they can do it in a continuous bait like you know continuous base so like it'll do 10 hours you know it'll pull 30 amps or whatever or 32 amps this one maximum right in the case of the Rivian, it could pull like 48 amps continuously for up to 10 hours. So that's a lot of power. That's a long time for some faulty wiring in your house to, um, for something wrong to happen, right? And so that's why these have that, right? But for some reason, the, the bonding, that's why you need that little bonding plug. So that tricks the the car into thinking the that charger into thinking that your connection wherever you're plugging in now it's bonded right so usually uh mobile uh cars sort of like this one they don't have a grounding rod that goes into the ground so there's these are floating ground devices and so that's why you can't just plug in one of these things and charge because then they don't meet the criteria that in their eyes it's not correctly wired right the neutral and the ground is not connected together but when you put that little bonding plug in there well then it tricks it but for some reason it tricks the rivian charger but it doesn't do the tesla charger so maybe the tesla charger has uh more rigorous testing there's like maybe it needs to have the bonding needs to be of a certain resistance you know and this plug doesn't have that same resistance uh i don't know there might be some other reasons right it might be the wrong leg for example uh right where this one doesn't care which leg uh because this one the two the hot and the neutral they're interchangeable because it's a floating um device but in your house there's a standard and the the one pin has to always be uh neutral and then the other ones to be right so I, we don't know there's for some reason the rivian one works but the tesla doesn't so if you need to do this for any reason you know by the way it, is it something that does it make sense to do this possibly not it's charging really slow you're charging at 12 uh, uh yeah like 1500 watts right so 1500 watts to charge that tesla it's gonna take forever but i guess if in, in a situation where you're completely stuck and you can't go and you have someone with a Rivian there and you're like hey I have a full battery and we have you know four hours that you're just gonna be parked here then yeah you could do this for four hours you could add I don't know like five ten miles of range to your Tesla and so it could get you out of a, a, a hard spot right so it's possible to do it it's kind of not very you know it's uh it's not very practical but you know in an emergency situation it's worth it all right so let me see 43 percent uh 420 126 miles let's go look at the tesla okay 62 percent at 421 there we go it's still charging 12 out of 12. there we go okay five o'clock we're at 64 percent let's look at the rivian all right, 502, uh, 121 miles, 42%. All right, so here are the final numbers. At the beginning of this test, the Rivian had 129 miles and it was at 44% state of charge. And the Tesla had 140 miles and it was at 62%. At the end of the test, the Rivian had 121 miles, 42%, and the Tesla was at 146 miles of range 
and it was at 64%. So that means the Rivian lost eight miles, which represents 2% of the battery, and the Tesla gained six miles, which represents 2% of the battery. So 2% lost in the Rivian and 2% added to the Tesla, eight miles lost in the Rivian, six miles added to the Rivian. So it seems like we're losing two miles of inefficiencies in the transfer from the Rivian to the Tesla, right? So that will keep adding up if you do a longer session of charging. So you have to keep that in mind. All right, I wanna thank you for watching this video. We'll see you guys on the next one. Bye. All right, now that our Tesla has charged or our Rivian has charged our Tesla, now it's time to go. Let's get out of here with our new energy in the battery. There we go. And there goes the, there goes the Rivian. It's about time that Rivian is good for something. Some extra energy in there.